So crystallography is not just about making pretty pictures. It's also about analysis of the structures. And we want to know about things like bond lengths, angles, and interactions of planes. So to do that in OLX2, we use the commands cell, ESD, and mplan. Uh, and since they're all sort of related, I'm going to clump them together into this uh, bite-sized recording. So let's start off with mplan. mplan, as the name probably uh, describes it, it's the mean plane. And you can access it through the view, geometry, submenu, and there's a mean plane of the active selection, as well as a load of other analysis tools there. So let's, let's uh, generate a mean plane for this ring. Now I can just use the uh, holding down shift and the left mouse button to draw this selection box and I can select a number of atoms and click on the mean plane and that will generate a mean plane for all the selected atoms and as you can see there's some information about that plane being posted into the console and I think it's probably a good point now to um, tell you about the console so anything inside this console window can be accessed again by this notepad icon up here on the top right hand side and if you click on it it will load up and as I say all the console information appears there so you can copy this information out drop it into your word processor or spreadsheet as you see fit but this mean plane that I've generated is not really nice and it's a bit random so we can just select it and delete it and we can say click on all the six carbon atoms of this ring and get the mean plane for that ring and, and that works pretty quickly. Uh, I could have reorientated the picture and I could have used the box selection mode as well and done the same thing. But there's things that obviously you can tell in this structure that you might want to do more than one or two mean planes on six membered rings. But OLX2 caters for that straight out of the box. So let's get rid of these rings uh, and just tell OLX2 to do um, mplan, which is the mean plane command. It's the same command that's being told by the, the GUI up here on the right. So if we type mplan, M-P-L-N, and then this time we tell it to specify all of the rings. And we want to use a subset of the rings. We're going to use all of the carbon-6 rings. And as you can see, it's generated the six-membered ring uh, mean planes. Now, this is Buckminster Fullerene. If I wanted to get the five membered rings, I could do that as well. Um, I would just change from C6 to C5, and now I have all the rings with five carbon atoms, all the rings with six carbon atoms automatically uh, selected with mean planes. And I can then select on two planes, and I can use the cell command to get further information about them. So, information such as the uh, angle between the planes or the distance between the, the centroids in, in the two rings. Um, I can also uh, use the ESD command and this differs from the cell command in that when ESD is run it provides information with um, the estimated standard deviations for those um, distances or angles as well. Um, you can only really do an ESD when you're working with a SIF. Uh, it doesn't function in, in a, um, a normal ins file without doing some further refinement and that's something I think I need to talk about in a sort of longer uh, uh, podcast. So um, what about if my rings don't contain um, just carbon? So for example if I have a, a, a in this sort of uh, five membered ring here I've got a nitrogen. Well that's not a problem I can tell it to select all the nitrogen and C4 rings and now I've got all the mean planes selected. Um.